Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Terraria. I'm Demanticore and it's been a good number of hours since my last uh, recording, the last episode. Uh, I've done a lot of work around the ship, mostly uh, building and mining, which frankly is two-thirds of the game. <laughs> um, but it was, a, it was a lot of grind, like just lots and lots of just mining the same stuff and um, placing blocks. Um, and going back and forth, you know, building the different pieces of furniture that I needed. Um, so in this episode, I am wearing a vampire outfit. So this is the vampire mask, vampire shirt, vampire pants, all using the blue acid dye. So if I take that off, you'll just see it's, it's I think, just plain black. No, purple. I think it's a purple. Uh, let's just pop down here purple sort of outfit. He's got a little bit of a hood and a white mask. Um, so I'll put the blue acid dye on and it just gives it a swirly effect, uh, which sort of suits uh, being a vampire. Um, so I've done a, a, lots of, uh, not so much exploring, more so just going and finding uh, materials that I needed. Um, largely lead. I needed lots of lead for different things, particularly toilets and cauldrons, <laughs> funnily enough, and chains as well, and uh, some chests and things like that. Um, a lot of other times was just mining uh, like crystal shards from the hallowed and um, what else has there been? Lead crystal shards? I think that's pretty much it. So I'll give you a little tour of the new changes, the new houses that I've got set up. Um, starting with the last one I made, and this is this is a little um, war table that I got. Um, often when there was a blood moon, rather than fighting through the whole blood moon, I would actually just use an Eternia crystal and just fight through that, and that would sort of using the Eternia crystal um, to set, fight the old one's army. Uh, would stop or pause the blood moon creatures coming through um, the waves would go about halfway through the night so I'd use another Eternia crystal and that would get me into the morning um, and that was the blood moon over so it's just a good time to just you know grind away at getting defender tokens I found with this build it, it was so easy like there was like the first three rounds there was times when I was just walking away to make a cup of tea um but because it, with, the, with the nimbus um cloud just at each at each end of the the arena uh spiders going one way spider queen going the other way quite a simple battle it's really only the the flying wivens uh if they managed to charge through were a problem but that you know one to a fight like in in for the entire turn at crystal not much of a problem at all. Um, very sleepy sort of fight at this point. I'm sure the, the, the later waves are going to um, test my limits. Um, so I don't think you'll, you'll you'll see anything different about my gear here, but I'll show you a few things that I've gotten and crafted from things that just randomly drop. So these aren't really things that you can necessarily work for. It's just stuff that just randomly drops from hard mode creatures, just your basic uh, run of the mill creatures that are running around, drop some things occasionally. Uh, so it's not like I could get them from chests or anything. Uh, I'll show you those in a moment. So yeah, got this little war table from uh, one of the old army fights. I'm pretty sure it was that. It could have been a blood bone. So the first thing is I've got rid of the cactus ship that the uh, witch doctor Uwa uh, was in and replaced it with a pearl wood ship. Three tiers for the guide. So we've got Wyatt the guide here at the moment. Um, it's a little bit of a str struggle fitting him in because I actually built this ship after the tax collector's ship over there on the left. Um, so after I demolished the cactus ship, yeah, I couldn't really get all of the, 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 I think it's about five rooms that I, I plan for each NPC. Bedroom, bathroom, kitchen, dining, library, lounge. So six rooms. Um, so I had to go up one level and then there was a bit of a, uh, 
you know, the NBC is really only going to use one floor. He's going to, he's not going to really consider the other floors his own, um, his own allotment of, of rooms. Um, but that's okay. It, it, it's his place. He's the only ship that has a, a porthole in the bottom, uh, a trapdoors for easy access. Uh, I didn't have that initially, um, but and I and I, I built his ship last because he's always you know the the person I want to run to when I'm crafting, and he was so good having him in the room right next to my um, workstations and everything. So uh, eventually I realized, ah, oh, it just makes sense for him to have a little pothole in the bottom of the ship. For all the ships to have a pothole, really, if they're going to be flying ships. Uh, but for him, just easy access for me to jump up and ask him questions. Um, so, yeah, it's a nice sort of um, pearlwood look. I like the, um, the aqua of the furniture and the lights. It's really nice. Uh, so we've got the, um, the lounge room here with big, huge windows is how I wanted it for him. He, you know, he's a guide. He, he looks out for us, so um, he's a bit of a scout in a sense. I've got a broken window there. I, didn't, I just realized. I'll have to get that fixed. Uh, get the, the get the repairman in for him. Um, so I'll close that and just walk through. Uh, so piano and dining room and bathroom kind of no privacy really but you know when you live by yourself you don't need that much privacy um except for the windows uh kitchen and bedroom uh, so over here is the tax collector's um ship now i was initially going to make his entire ship out of bone i can't even remember if i even tried to make um blocks from it uh, th so the initial plan was actually that the guide was going to have an obsidian ship. And that was just reflective of the fact, like, I was running out of materials and furniture sets that I wanted to decide. And, you know, I didn't want anybody to double up. Um, I'd already, you know, distributed all the other types to everybody else. And I've, and honestly, I really wanted the, the guide to actually have... Um, Something good. It feels terrible that he has to be sacrificed to, to uh, move the plot forward every time, dropping his voodoo dolls into the lava to get the wall of flesh. Horrible that has to happen. Like, kind of great in game design that you have to do it. Um, but, it, you know, I sympathize and feel sorry for him. So, uh, it, But initially, I, when I run out of all the um, furniture sets to dis distribute, I thought, ah, oh, obsidian. I'll give him the obsidian furniture that I've been collecting from all the um, houses that were down there. And make it out of the city and just as a sort of either as a bit of a reminder of his role or as a bit of a fu to you know his role as a sacrifice so i started making it it just gnawed at me gnawed at me going oh, i really don't want to be putting him in a city in place it just on top of having a voodoo doll and you know getting killed by it to go and pretty much say, look, this is your fate. <laughs> it just seemed terrible. Um, and I knew I was going to give the tax collector bone uh, furniture because he's a skinflint is the, is the way I've got it in my mind, which is a stereotype, the idea that the tax man's going to be um, a bit uh, picky with his money for a ghoul. Um, but he, is a bit of, he, he even talks a bit like a... Um, uh, uh, screwed really like you know why don't you try collecting money from Dolgrim and not lose a hand or foot or hey here you are again taking all my coin just grab it and be gone from my sight so he's, he's a bit of a dick like he's a stereotype really I, I, I personally don't have anything any problem with taxes I think they're necessary in a good society so you know, I don't really have a grudge against the tax collector, but he does behave a bit of a dick in this one. Um, so the bone, being a skin plant, uh, seemed like a good ship idea. Um, I could have made it a much smaller ship to fit with that idea of being frugal, and, you know, not have a clock and a piano bookcase, and you know, make it much more uh, tight, really. Um, but I just like being able to use up all the furniture pieces and see what they all look like together. Uh, and he's got his chest all out here where I've stored the extra things and a chest statue at the front and a thin little rain cloud on top um, just cause uh, what else? Ah, uh, 
this one. <laughs> this, this is sort of still in the process of being made. Um, the cloth is pumpkin abode. So this one, I, th I think I explained in the previous episode, um, the cloth here just seemed like, besides the fact that he was cursed, that, that, that's terrible. I don't, you know, begrudge him the fact that he, he was Skeletron. That, that's a curse that he didn't really have a choice about that. Um, but as a cloth here, Halloween, the constant costumes I'm getting in goodie bags, I've, I've, I feel like I must have all of them by now. Um, but every now and then there's a new one. Um, I wanted to put in, use the pumpkin set and put him in a flaming pumpkin head. Um, very Halloween-y. Um, headless horseman, sort of all that sort of homage. Um, so he, he's ship is the first one that um, serves a bit of a function really because it's also his cloth you know cloth making what are they called seamstress seems to tailoring tailoring um, store where he's gonna have all the um, all the outfits that I've worn the vanity outfits I haven't decided I think I'll, I'll end up putting the armors in here as well but it kind of depends on how many vanity armors I go through because I want to sort of you know switch vanity costumes once per episode so this will become a big display of all those that I've worn it's sort of his showroom for all things he's not making them but he's got them um a little couch and a little a workbench here and I love this little change room <laughs> behind these curtains I, I I realize you know I don't have to actually lock off rooms with um doors you can just use banners as like a little curtain so there's a little change room for his customers and then his own bathroom in there looks like a hollowed out pumpkin you can probably see with the glass in the background it's like a fire lava fall glass um, giving the big pumpkin face in the background and using living flame on the top as I collect more living flame uh, I seem to get more of the green stuff than the red stuff um, but as I collect more I'm just gonna make that fire grow bigger and bigger so it looks like he's you know a big flying um, pumpkin so uh, that's it and, it and it's and it's also like so I didn't give separate like floors for these rooms because it's kind of like a big warehouse so he's a big <laughs> like uh, a costume warehouse uh, like you see around the cities um, so he just lives up up in the top rafters there so I hope you like that one I hope you're liking these the, these different ideas coming up with it um, uh, I know they're probably not very original and, and my pixel art you know leaves a lot to be desired I understand that but I have it a lot of fun um, coming up with them and going, yeah, that's how I'm going to have it. Um, and I'm pleased with this. I'm pleased with how this turned out, getting a nice round shape and everything like that. The fire looks a little cruddy at the top, but when there's more of it, I think it'll um, make a lot of sense. Um, so, the, the, there's the rocket up there, the mechanics rocket at the top. Um, I suppose she was the first, like, really functional... Um, house. Now this one is the party girl's house. So this is where I had to do a lot of farming to get crystals from the hallowed. Uh, so she is floating on a cloud with all this crystal stoneware around. So she's got all the normal rooms. Um, she's got a little balloon dude here that's just spitting up balloons to help it float. Balloons are all around the outside. A dance floor with the little disco ball. Um, can't get those lights to change but I can if I get crystal blocks no rainbow blocks this is some a special slime in the hello drops rainbow blocks that to actually change color um, bubbles and a bubble maker in the bathroom um, and you know a couch out dragged out onto the rooftop here as you do um, for party houses uh, fireworks there Balloons holding it up in addition to the cloud. Fireworks there. Woo woo woo! So she's got a party house. So the idea for this comes from, besides the fact of, you know, frat party house type thing, Douglas Adams in Hitchhiker's Guides of the Galaxy, or not that book, one of the other books, I think, maybe the fifth one. Uh, there's a house that's floating through the atmosphere of one of the planets that. Um, the main character runs into accidentally while he's flying. Uh, spoilers. Um, 
but that it, it was kind of meaningless. There's, there's just a house that's flying from nobody knows why. There's people inside perpetually partying. Um, and I don't remember if there's any more significance to that part of the story, but it, it just reminded me a lot of that, the idea of just having a house that's flying and it's got a party going on inside. Love that idea as, as a ship design. Um, so that's my inspiration for that one. I'm um, pretty sure you've seen this one, the marble one. It's um, Darnell's here. He's not meant to be here. Darnell, what are you doing? It's not your house. Um, waiting for the stylist. I don't know when the stylist comes. I'll have to look that up. This is Darnell's house. He is in a dynasty wood house. Where are you occupied? Who? What? Ah, he switched to it. Okay. Um, so the idea here, so with the dynasty wood, was to have like a long flat bottom boat. I think the boats are called a skiff. I think is, is the right word. It's just a like really long um, boat with a, like a little bit of a cabin um, in the middle of it. So I love this furniture design. It, it's really great. Um, like low seating and tables and couch and um, lanterns, like paper lanterns are lovely. Um, and this was one where I really had to uh, figure out how to do it, because actually the roof was a, a, a tile higher than this, because it was sort of meant to, like, you know, be out, you, you could see out, if you could get high enough, you could see out of the, um, under this roof to the outside. But I got the warning saying, no, nah, too big, can't have it um, that big, uh, so I had to lower it down. It works out okay, I think. Um, ended up getting some red uh, shingles to go on top. Sort of makes me think, well, I wonder why there aren't more shingles in this game. Like, there aren't more, uh, for every furniture type or block type, that there isn't a matching shingle uh, roof type to go with it. It would be really cool to have more of that, so we don't just, you know, finish off a roof with just horizontal lines and I don't know, slanted blocks of the same type. But yeah, so this is Darnell, the ammo maker, archery guy, I can't remember what his profession is, sells bullets and things. Uh, he's got the boomerang as the, as the best statue that I could come up with for that. Well, I don't think there's any others that can, there may be a bow statue, I'm not sure. Um, down here, don't I, no, nothing's changed around this side of things. Still got the, um, I'm going to have to remake the Tinkerer's uh, Sucks, the Tinkerer's um, Ship. There's, there's a bit of room there to be able to do that. Make them a bit horizontal, give them a few more rooms. Same as everybody else. So, um... The Witch Doctor, until I get the lizard furniture, she's gone down into Wilbur's room with a rich mahogany which comes from the jungle. Makes a lot of sense, that one. Uh, Wilbur gets the um, boreal furniture, which I think, like, the rich mahogany, it's just the fact that it has the word rich in it. <laughs> in reality, it's just pinkish wood um, that looks like from a cabin, which just doesn't suit uh, Wilbur. I think this furniture in here really suits him a lot better. Um... I'm not sure, I think my final design ideal is to have him have spooky furniture, which comes from one of the events. Um, but now that, I'm, now that I'm talking about it, maybe I should just keep the keep it the bor boral, boreal, boreal, wood. Um, and the ship's getting a bit empty now, so I've just got these two guys here. I will make a ship for... Uh, Celestia the Dryad, and there's a little bit of a backstory I just came up with just not long ago. The Angler is still here, which is good, because he's, um, Skylake. Ooh, I've got to make one of them. Um, I'll have to figure out what, how I'd like to have his, um, ships, but there's something quite relevant to that. The Tavern Keeper is still here, he's still got his room in the tavern. Um, so I, th I was thinking I might extend some stairs down into uh, the guide's old room and he can have that as, as his apartments. Um, not really sure. So what I had the idea with Wilbur to um, 
just like the clothier, clothier, tailor, clother, um, he would have a store as well. And in his store, he would have all my unused trinkets and miscellaneous items um, that I'm not using uh, on display. But I can't really figure out what sort of shape that would be other than another ship. And the ships just, when they go up to three levels, it just doesn't look great as a store, like for a store, unless I make it really big. Which kind of makes sense, since I use them a lot. It's him and the guy that I use the most. Um, going left and right, selling to him and getting instructions from the guide. Um, so we'll see where that goes. I've just done so much work lately. I've, I've really got to... Let's check with um, Celestia and see how the corruption's going. Last time I checked, it was at 19% corruption and much less in the hallowed, but I can't, I can't remember. I think that was in the single digits. 21% corruption. Hey, that's not too bad. Two more percent? Yeah, I thought it was five percent hello, but it just seemed like previously it was five percent hello, and now it's six. It just seemed like a low figure. But yeah, it's not going so fast. It's, not, it's kind of slowed down. I think it's probably all expanded as far as it can. I'll show you what work I've been doing over on, or over on the right, on the way to the thing I want to do. The um, tomb is getting crowded. I have died many, many, many times. Um, sometimes by my own fault, running into my own explosives, as I, as I tend to do. I tend to forget I've put them down, I, like when I'm putting down three or something like that, and I jump back into it. <laughs> um, that's happened probably three times, I think. Maybe five <laughs> in this whole game. Um, I do, I am forming a bit of an idea about what I'd like, how I'd like the pyramid. Um what I'd like to, it to be made out of but it just seems a bit crass at the moment so I just need to refine that idea a bit more um, hopefully before I run out of space here corruption is still coming through I've been trying to get rid of it I did a little bit of a test again put up more sunflowers um, along the way to see if it was one particular point and no it's just coming up all underneath so that's a shame I spent a really long time mining this all out, and the thing is, when you get lots of money, which I have several platinum, maybe seven platinum, six, uh, gotta change my coins, seven platinum. Um, explosives are uh, easy to come by, like to be able to buy the, the full dynamite sticks. Um, it's easy to do, and when, you know, money isn't a worry with that, you can get really trigger happy throwing around bombs to mine into places. Um, so yes, I died a few times to that, um, but it just, it's so addictive to just keep blowing up really big sections of land um, using that. Which is great. I really don't want it to be, you know, getting to mid or late game and having to finick around with just, you know, a little drill. Did I tell you where I got that titanium drill? I was wondering, pretty sure I've had that for a long time. Um, so the idea here is I wanted to make a fish farm. Um, and that doesn't sound that great. I, I personally don't like two things was tearing up the landscape there's part of me that sort of goes is this how I'd really treat the land like if I if I was a you know a millionaire would I really go hmm how can I tear up huge tracts of land and to turn it into farming um, like fish farms or something like that and destroy the landscape so I really am denied about how to you know what where I would actually want to build it because I wanted it to be near my entire fleet um, not too far away, near enough that I could just run over and do the fishing, and I realized, oh, the corruption, it's right there, it's a horrible use of land already, um, so I'll just blow it all up and use up that space, and it's right nearby, so it seemed like a really good plan, so, um, the, so the second thing I don't like about the fish farm is the fact that there's no real, like, unlike the houses, 
there's not really much room for imagination about it. You pretty much just need, uh, from what I read online, um, any, you need at least 75 tiles of water to fish. So that could be one tile wide, 75 down, and you could fish in that or, you know, any variation of that. Um, but all the tile amounts that are less than 300, when there's less than 300 water under the surface that you're fishing on, um, you get penalties to your fishing power. So obviously for a good fish farm, you want the ponds to be at least 300 in tiles. So that's, I, I calculated it, um, 10 down, 30 across as my, my template. And so I wanted to make one for each biome um, so that for whenever I get the quests, because st I'm still needing two more things from Izzy the Angler um, to, for my cell phone G no, upgrade, uh, I can just come over here for whatever the biome quests are. So, um, this one was previously the corruption, and then I realized I can. The corruption's right below me. I mean, you know, I wanted it to be easy and safe and everything like that. Um, but I, I wanted also to have my forest, um, ponds over here. Um, and the corruption just tends to take up the biome space, you know, just, you enter into the corruption so easily. It's just, it just needs to be on the edge of the screen. You're in the corruption biome. Uh, and I wanted just a pure forest, um, fishing pond, just like the others. So this is my forest one. I was going to, so previously it was the corruption and then I was going to put the forest over here on the left. Um, might put the honey over there. This is the desert. Desert needs 1,000 blocks of sand to get, to get the desert biome. Um, and sadly, that's not happening. Oh no, the destroyer is coming. Uh, let's do this quickly. Okay, so we're gonna run across. I was hoping to go the other way. Doesn't really matter. If th There's the hallowed one, which, you know, once again, only needs to be on the edge of the screen and it overtakes everything. Jungle, good, the background's changed for that. That's the jungle one. Here's the snow one. Hurrah, that one always easily takes over the background as well. Dungeon, I realized too late, this doesn't work. You can only have a dungeon pond in the dungeon because it needs a naturally placed uh, dungeon wall and mushroom there. Um, so I'm, I'm, I just left the dungeon there. I might transform into something else later, but I'm not sure. Let's um, mirror back so I can get to the arena. Uh, I'm not going to win this. Uh, so there's been a few fights, though. I've had a few skeletons, Skeletron the Primes, a few the Twins, maybe one more the Destroyer, I'm not sure if I've had the Destroyer again. Um, no, I did, I did have the Destroyer, because I thought, oh wow, I've got these new weapons and things, I can, um, uh, I should have a better chance now. So, um, I don't think I will. My armor's the exact same. It's 22. It used to be 20. I'm not sure why it's gone up to. Probably because of something I've equipped. I should reforge that frog leg to give it something. So some things I found along the way that um, were really good. So you can get a dark shard and a light shard dropped from any creature in either the, the hallowed or the corruption. Put them together with, can't remember what metal it was, maybe some souls of light or something. You get a demonic day, day of power. Maybe that's meant to be power, I'm not sure. Um, so it's just a regular flail, except it has a chance to confuse. It shoots really fast. I didn't really notice a knockback on the things that I was hitting with. I won't use it now because I've got a pause for the destroyer that's about to come along. Uh, Fossil Amarok. So uh, that's just a yo-yo. Just what I got in the frozen areas. I've had two, three of them, I think. When I was doing a lot of the... Um, the building the farming areas, the fish farm in particular, you're standing there in the one spot and the summons, the, the little spider legs are off killing everything that's that's spawning all around. And I'd end up dropping down onto the ground below and there would just be 
coins and crap everywhere all along the surface. So really great for getting money, even though it didn't really feel like I was getting much money. Um, I mean, it didn't seem like it in the numbers. But, you know, you just constantly pick up coins, picking up rotten chunks and all the crap along the way. And also every now and then, you know, an Amarok drops as well. Um, so oh, that's the best yo-yo I've got. I also got a Hellfire yo-yo from... I went across the underworld at one point. Because um, I just wanted to get to the edge of the screens and find more shadow chests. Because I know that I, I'd miss things uh, from the shadow chests that I would probably uh, leveled out of. Because they were pretty hard mode things that you could get. One thing was a Hellfire yo-yo back. I think that actually just dropped. Um, I think that's uh, 44 melee damage for me. So the Amrocks, you know, two points better. Um, but I just recently got a skeleton merchant, just when I finished my farms down under un, in the cavern, who sold the yo-yo glove. The yo-yo glove allows you to shoot two yo-yos at once, which is huge. Um, you don't get to pick the yo-yos, it's just the one yo-yo, yo-yo, uh, it shoots out, if, if uh, once it hits an enemy, a second one pops out of you, of the, a duplicate of the one that you've already shot out. And hits as well and I believe so you get the yo-yo yo glove that lets you do that you pair that with the white string and a counterweight so the counterweight which I probably don't really show much of um, it's just a little ball that spins around wildly around you so you shoot the yo-yo out and the and the counterweight spins around you forwards and backwards out behind you so it's a really good sort of you know a bit of an aura of damage around you um, but you know, there's not any knockback really. So you put the glove, white string, counterweight together, you get a yo-yo bag, gives them user master yo-yo skills, combines all those things, and yes, apparently from the wiki, it says you get two counterweights, one counterweight per yo-yo, you get two yo-yos shooting out, so you get two counterweights. That's what I saw in a little video on the line, but I, online, but I didn't see that myself. But then again, I was only attacking one creature at a time. Supposedly, the cannibal weights might come up when there's more than one creature. Um, but still, I'm trying to play a summon class. So even though this is awesome damage output, you get 46 times 2 plus the counterweights. Loads of damage, but I'm trying to be a summon. Summoner first and magic user second. Melee and archery third. Uh, so sadly, I'm not, I'll, I'll show you how it works, but I'll, I'm not going to be using much. Media stuff. I made this from something. Maybe. Meteorite. But I'm not. That, that, that doesn't seem right. I would have made that much earlier if, if that was true. So it's uh, showers, meteors. It's pretty cool. They, they uh, do a bit of damage. They basically do the 54 damage that you expect. And they're kind of fast. Um, but. Just like this, this, the Star Fury weapon, like you need a line of sight from directly above you to the creature uh, with no blocks in the way, so it's kind of really hard to aim. Um, so I haven't really used that much. Banana Ring! I got four more, so I can shoot seven, but you only seem to get out about four before it's sort of, you know, shooting out the first one again. Um, still really powerful. Once again, I'm, I'm trying to be melee, so... Haven't really used that much. I've been relying on the mythical poison stuff. 59 magic damage is pretty good. And it's just pierces. And it's got all, you know, the great stats on it. So the, the piercing is really awesome. Plus the poison as well. That um, I think the creatures can, if they, they can get poison, can take continuous damage. Uh, Reforge for the numbers wrong. Rod to, for better stats. Uh, and there's a lot of things I've got that... I had out leveled really that I've stored away in my um, uh, storage box of all the weapons and things I'm not using. Um, and one thing I wanted to show you before this event happened is the next summoning gear that I have the parts for, and I wanted to show you how I got that. Um, and also get two more souls of flight to make my first wings. But that's going to have to be in the next episode. Join me for that one, where I fight the Destroyer, most likely will die quite quickly, and we'll get
get an upgrade to my armor and a new kind of summon. Um, I hope you've enjoyed the tour and the updates of everything that I've been doing here. Um, if you've liked seeing all these changes and, and been entertained for this episode, hit the like button please. And if you would like notifications of future video updates, um, hit subscribe. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Cheers!